Craig Bishop and the Council Roundup. And the Council Roundup each and every Wednesday when there's a Springfield City Council meeting Tuesday evening. We unpack it and bring you all the latest so you know what's going on here in the capital city with city government. And uh, back at it, Committee of the Whole last night, Alderman Sean Gregory was the chairperson of the committee. He's got a couple of ordinances he wanted to uh, definitely tackle. Uh, and uh, working through the agenda, it took about two and a half hours or more, uh, but they started with uh, something I think is important that we do hear from time to time, and that is how much money the city has in its coffers. And here is the city treasurer, Colleen Redpath Fager, uh, laying out just indeed how much money there is in the city's coffers. So uh, take it away, Madam Treasurer. The treasurer's report for the corporate fund for the month of August, beginning balance $71,831,140. We took in total receipts of $11,655,840. We had total disbursements in the month of August totaling $9,987,184, which left the corporate Fund ending balance in the month of August at $73,498,760. Wow. The ending general balance fund includes $19,473,945, which is the August ending balance of the ARPA money. Yeah, that's, Thank uh, you. That concludes my report. Probably one of the largest fund balances I've heard announced at the city council chambers. Uh, 73 million, 19 million is ARPA money. Now on to city 2023, business. 406, an ordinance approving a professional services agreement with Burns and McDonald Engineering Company Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $110,000 for professional engineering services for the Dalman Unit 4 gas conversion study for the Office of Public Utilities. So they're looking to possibly get a study about converting CWLP's coal-fired power plant into a national gas powered power plant here is uh, alderman hanauer uh, asking some questions to doug brown i got that's one question and you know uh people talk about solar and and that but i believe solar prices are have skyrocketed am i correct what, that's correct what are they currently what, where are they currently uh, basically they're, they're more than double the market right now so obviously solar is expensive, double what it was. What about wind? Oh, it's not as reliable. More from Doug Brown and others. There's a lot of uh, complicating factors that have basically increased prices, but now they're, they're more than double the market price. So, uh, you know, that's something we would have trouble trying to justify to the city council and to our customers that we would raise basically rates to to pay for that wow. what's the wind what's the wind prices are they about are, are have they doubled as well or are they uh well wind they, isn't really market? doesn't fit our portfolio very well um solar does um especially with uh unit four and our peaking units that we have uh so wind um there's some factors in there that you have to look at it's, it's genuinely a little bit probably a little bit cheaper than solar um because they're a lot of them are existing um, so they're they're usually uh, piecemeal, you know, trying to sell some uh, off the the existing ones. So obviously, a lot of questions about alternative energies and how those are going to play into the portfolio. But looking at uh, getting natural gas in there, it's a study that'll cost six figures. We don't want figures. to replace Unit Four right now because renewables they're not the same reliability as Unit Four. Well, plus we got a lot of debt service. Oh, it's our debt service on on right, Unit and that goes now. until twenty forty. Twenty forty. And that's about the time the Governor J.B. Pritzker gave for coal-fired power plants to essentially shut down. So you've got that in the mix here as well with state policy cracking down on these things. More with from unit, CWLP. Uh, for burning coal, coal prices, if they go up too much more in the future, we need to be able to look at other fuel sources. Natural gas is, is, is one of them in order to be able to retain the reliability. Uh, once the technology, I think, is you know, comes along, if there's something that can replace the reliability with Unit 4, we would definitely consider that at that point. What would that be, though? Could it be natural gas? Uh, there were several people there to talk uh, from environmental groups kind of pushing back on this idea. Alderman uh, Roy Williams Jr. sounded that, off. Will we get incentives to extend our plan or do a plan? And if our, you're, there's no such thing as expiration of a, a plan for us that we're in right now? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is that based on market conditions, that an IRP right now would not result 
in anything. It's actually kind of you know, it's going to confirm what I'm telling you that we want to keep unit four. We want to keep our peakers for reliability and to hedge against the market. We would want to look at solar and batteries if the price is competitive, which I'm telling you, it's not right now. So obviously a lot of consideration Thank going into all of this and getting a professional on board with a hundred thousand dollar contract to do a study. I know there's a lot of criticism of studies, but this might be one of those important. Uh, here's more of the debate back and forth. We have got to make sure that whatever we do, you know, and, and whether renewables or whatever, that it gives us the, the our rate payers the best rates possible. Because if we get, if we decide we open it up and it says, yeah, we do renewables or we go off the grid. And in this case, if we were work, if we were working off the grid and we had to get 50 percent of our our uh, our grid, you know, our power through uh, solar, it's twice the price of what what the what the regular power is. We'd be paying that and that that affects our rate payers. I think people, that's one thing we got to understand. And we're going to have special interest groups come up and they're going to they're wanting us to get off coal. They're wanting us to get off petroleum products. Every, every time I've met with them, that's their game plan. And that's fine and dandy, but if it doesn't help, if it's, it's, if it's not the best for our rate payers, I'm sorry, I, I won't be on board for it. And CWLP is one of the only municipally owned power generating facilities owned by the taxpayers and the rate payers. Here's Alderman Donnellan. I think it's the responsible thing to do because we have been asked, at least I have, by constituents and groups and about whether, how come we don't switch over to natural gas? What's it, gonna, what's it going to cost? And I don't know the answer to that question. So I think something like this actually does make sense because then we know the answer. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the responsible thing to do. I'm not saying natural gas is the way to go because I don't know the answer to the question yet. Uh, I think in an ideal world, we'd have a mixed portfolio of wind, solar, coal, and even maybe even natural gas and but we got to get there we got to ask those questions and do the study and uh, fortunately or unfortunately however you want to look at it we have to hire experts to do that for us and i know that uh, studies have been criticized in the past for you know going up on a shelf and collecting dust uh but this is about uh, possibly converting uh, to natural gas uh from coal fire power uh, but, you know, even there, you've got concerns about emissions and you've also got the uh, uh, possibility of a hydrogen powered facility uh, that could go into the Pawnee area. Um, what's going on there with that billion dollar plant that was talked about several years ago? Is it still alive? Are the investors still interested? Is it going to be hydrogen or is it going to be natural gas or is it going to be conversion of what? Still a lot of uncertainty out there with uh, more and more policies coming down the pike to impact energy production, not just in Springfield, but all across the state of Illinois. All right. Uh, so we're in the middle of the council roundup, a review of last night's Springfield City Council meeting here on WMAY. I'm Greg Bishop. Follow me anywhere. Bishop on air. All right. Back at it with the council roundup from last night's Springfield City Council meeting. And the next conversation they're having is about problem properties, something they've talked about uh, time and again. But here is a reading of the ordinance up for consideration. It's from Alderman Sean Gregory, who announced that uh, he just wants to talk about this, even though he's going to withdraw the ordinance. Here is the ordinance as read by Clerk Lesko. Ordinance amending the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended by adding Chapter 106 regarding the Health and Safety Property Registry. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you, sir. I, so, I uh, Alderman to, Gregory, uh, he uh, has some uh, individuals come up to address this issue, uh, including from the uh, local uh, property owners group, uh, Anthony Nudo. He uh, addresses the council. Uh, my name is Anthony Nudo, and I am the treasurer for the Springfield Area Landlord Association. And while I don't live in the city at this time, I am a multiple property owner in the city. So he knows a lot. We've actually talked to Anthony in the past about uh, some state policies, but he uh, addresses some of the concerns when it comes to problem properties in the city of Springfield. A vacant property registry where mm -hmm. those properties that are vacant, they get registered, and then the city collects the money off of that and tears them down. Right. We've seen a lot of houses tore down um, in Springfield, and you know what? By right, some of them probably needed to be tore down. Absolutely. Um, so, like I said, we have we have plenty of hammers to hammer those nails. So, yeah, uh, policies are in place, he says, to go after them. Uh, but there were concerns about, well, how do we find some of those property owners that don't want to be found? Uh, Nudo says it's easy. Um, but the tax bill. 
Okay. Send send your notice to the tax bill. Okay. Where the tax bill goes. Who has a tax bill? Okay. Where does it go? Is there a person, a corporation? A person. person. It's, it's a person. Individual. Okay, well, that that's your clue right there. That's 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 the person that needs, if you have to serve them, then that's the one that has to be served. And then you can continue in the process. So, again, uh, Alderman Sean Gregory uh, bringing this ordinance up uh, because he's talked about it in the past. In particular, he's got a lot of problem properties he wants to address. Uh, here is Alderman Gregory sounding off. Mr. Fuchs, Public Works. I'm with y'all. Y'all do a wonderful job once we can get to them. So um, we'll keep working at it. And, and I think it's just more of a uh, finding them and getting to them and serving them. And, and if they want to fix up the houses that, that, that we're barking about, fine, I'm all for it. But if not, and you're going to run and play games, we're, 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 I'm, I'm done with it. I'm, I'm tired of it. So uh, obviously an ongoing conversation. Uh, there's been other efforts to try to have a uh, uh, you know landlord registry of sorts that didn't advance. But next up on the agenda, the ordinance authorizing an additional payment with Evans Carthage for branch and yard waste disposal services associated with the Duratio storm event 629-2023 in the amount not to exceed $561,570 for the Office of Public Works. Okay. So another uh, half a million dollars for uh, waste pickup from uh, trees and stuff that have fallen down. Think could get worse, Director Fuchs from Public Works says. I want to warn everybody, uh, that storm was so devastating, and we have so many trees, and we are all Midwesterners. We love a big tree with a great canopy so we can sit in the backyard and enjoy the shade. These trees have been damaged. They've been severely damaged. We're, we're cutting trees down every single day. We're taking major limbs out of trees every single day. We're going to continue to to have that problem, I suspect, uh, on into the winter. And one of my concerns is, uh, let's say we get a classic uh, uh, Midwestern storm, we get four, five, six inches of snow, mm -hmm. maybe a foot of snow, right. and the temperature drops to three degrees, oh, and the wind picks up out of the northwest for two or three days. Yep. These trees are damaged. Yep. They'll be extremely cold and dry at that point. So, folks, we need to be prepared to continue to lose large limbs and trees throughout this city certainly through the winter you know i think uh, that right there is a uh, a pretty important message that uh, we need to convey to everybody out there property owners listen if you've got some branches that are rubbing up against some of the power lines you need to get the utility out there and get that cleaned up before winter comes around uh, if you've got uh, some dead limbs and things uh, it's probably best to take care of that this fall uh, any way you can before we do get any potential ice storms that might come and just wreak havoc on uh, the infrastructure some more. Uh, so I think uh, Director Foots there making a pretty compelling argument of uh, just uh, doing the best you can to maintain such properties. All right, it is the council roundup again uh, last night's two and a half hour meeting, more than that. Uh, if you're waiting to hear any conversation or debate about Lincoln Library, they really didn't have it. All they did was they just advanced uh, several ordinances. One, keeping Catherine Harris on as the interim library director, uh, and then also uh, an ordinance to uh, have the appointed library director, uh, Gwendolyn Harrison. Uh, both of those, no debates. They just uh, put them on the agenda for next week. Uh, so again, last night was the Committee of the Whole, where they determine which ordinances are going where, either on debate or on consent, uh, or if they're just going to withdraw them, uh, or uh, you know, they uh, will debate some things. But next week's when they take final action on those issues and what they covered last night. But again, no debate last night about Lincoln Library. So it'll be interesting to hear what happens next week. Uh, and of course, we'll be covering it here as we do each and every week with the Council Roundup. More, though, coming up here on WMAY. Back at it with the Council Roundup and the review of last night's Springfield City Council meeting where we unpack some of the uh, highlights um, that you need to know about, the things they talked about. Of course, uh, a lot of it uh, early on started with the issue of uh, power generation and uh, possible study looking at transferring the coal fire generation to natural gas. What about hydrogen? Is that going to be part of this study? Anyways, that's going to cost six figures. You've also got a half a million dollar contract extension for picking up more yard waste after that derecho, uh, which really just wreaked havoc. I mean, how long were people without power? A week or so? But the warning is... Uh, things could get dicey this winter if we have a mixture of ice and wind because some of these trees are so severely damaged. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go on now and um, hear from uh, the, the, the next issue up for consideration. 
Uh, last night's Springfield City Council meeting, here is uh, the clerk reading off the next ordinance. Grant agreement with Better Life, Better Living for kids and payment in the amount of $215,000 pursuant to grant number 23-201, I'm sorry, 203-186 from the State of Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity in the amount of $3 million dollars for the community collections program for the Springfield Police Department. So this is uh, one of three ordinances that Alderman Sean Gregory wanted to bring up uh, and discuss, and he had these on first reading last week. Uh, here's uh, Alderman Gregory discussing this a bit. Um, so what I wanted to do, these, these groups have been at the table with us and, and the former Mayor Langfelder for, you know, over two years. And, and, um, with a promise that 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 we would um, move forward on this empowerment zone, and, and we have, you know, we got young people away needing needing the attention and the activities and the um, just overall mentorship in our community. So. Gregory is looking for uh, some of the $3 million in grants the city's getting to go to these programs that former Mayor Langfelder had worked on. He continues on, but Hanauer jumps in. But I just am concerned. We don't want to we don't want to make we don't want to screw things up and lose everything is my well, concern. If I may follow up, the, the 645,000 was specifically told to not only me, but former Mayor Langfelder and Chief, that it's supposed to be used for programming only. And that's why we use $400,000 in a core grant from Representative Sue Sera on the buildings. Now, the buildings are going to cost a substantial amount of money that we don't necessarily have. So therefore, I came back to the plan. The plan says that $645,000 is supposed to be used in the empowerment zone that we can't get off the ground. But it has so, to be approved give me, by the state. So send it up and let's approve it. So obviously, uh, questions back and forth about the priorities and the funding here. Uh, let's hear now from the police chief who's helping lead this effort of getting these dollars in the right place. Absolutely, um, chief. I'm going to shoot straight real quick, too, and I think it's important that I make this very clear that um, – as the leader of this organization, it's about developing partnerships throughout our entire community. It's about being able to uh, build trust and confidence in the citizens that we serve. It's about being able to mentor with our youth uh, and uh, put them on the path to success. And uh, by partnering with groups in our community, I think that's a, a viable way to do that. Now, I, I don't have the magic wand to wave any money here, but I've had uh, multiple conversations about uh, partnering with organizations because it's important that uh, our youth, uh, some of those which are one bad decision away from ruining their lives, that they see law enforcement interacting with them. So I think that's very, that's a very powerful cause. So obviously a lot of uh, more conversation had and priorities and how these dollars are going to be spent. Next up, insurance for city employees. Uh, people are leaving us early because they can't afford the insurance. Uh, we, we're 25 officers short when we started this term. Uh, because the pay was un was su significantly lower than everybody else in central Illinois. Some of the other things that have our officers leaving before the end of their 20 years is because they can't afford to quit the job and retire from their job because they can't afford the insurance. We need to do something different. I will not vote for this. I think it's bad. I think it's bad for the, for the police department. And we need to stand up for our police officers. And this is why I'm against it. So uh, Alderman Redpath there talking about two different ordinances, but he has uh, support for one, opposition for another. They had uh, an expert there to speak on this. Hi, uh, my name is Mike Hallwood. I'm the labor co-chair, IBW. Um, so Mike, he's there to answer any questions. And then Alderman Redpath, after hearing some, he's like, oh, wait a second, I was talking about another ordinance. Uh, here's Alderman Redpath. Everybody else. You know what? I got the, I got this mixed up with the next ordinance. Right. Oh, because I, <laughs> okay. Because the one percent, I don't have a problem with the one percent. Okay. My problem is the three percent for the retirees. That's what. That's where my big problem is. Oh. So uh, clearly, there's um, you know questions on how much more cost new employees or current employees or retirees are going to have to pay for insurance. Cost that group of people is generating 28% more of the cost in our actual spend than any other group, active, union, non-union, um, non-active, HSA, just because of, of the nature of the plan. And, and we're trying to come up with some different ideas. And uh, just so you know, the, 
the insurance committee is very, very concerned about our police department and our, our fire department, all our first responders. And we have partnered with the chief to help fund the visions program for the police out of our wellness funds. And today we just voted to move a center of excellence that's in Florida and a center of excellence that's in Washington, D.C. that specifically catered to the mental health needs of our first responders to our in-network payment tier. So our officers and our firefighters are not hit with those huge out-of-pocket expenses. So clearly, um, there's questions about how much insurance is going to cost employees and retirees. More from Alderman Redpath on this. We, we, are, we are losing police officers to other departments, not just because of this, but because we are not paying them properly. They haven't been paid properly for a lot of years, and we've been fighting this fight. We, we appropriated $2.3 million in the budget to raise the salary just up to where they could be, and the other departments are still going away from us. It's, it's, we got to do something. It's, I, we're losing good people I completely who want to work here you. at the city of Springfield. Yeah. I, and I'm I not agree. blaming you. No, no, I understand. I mean, there's a lot of people I want to blame, but uh, that's not the time and the place now. But we've got to find a better way to do this. These guys do not deserve this. So uh, there was some talk about a hiring freeze that took place several years ago where they weren't hiring new people. And uh, Redpath uh, pushes back on the idea of cost savings there. We, we wanted to boast about all this money we saved, and we didn't save money. We, what we did was we put ourselves in public works in the fire department, in the police department, we put people behind the eight ball because we wanted to look like we were being fiscally responsible when we really were not. And if we would have been kept up those payments over those years, we wouldn't be in this mess right now. Is that right? So, I mean, I agree that across, and it's not just police and fire, it's accountants and attorneys and linemen. I, I mean, our guys are. I'm not trying to leave anybody hour. out, but you understand. Yeah, the no, concept. I understand it. It's a, st a systemic problem, and I think we all know that we need to get there. We're having the same problem. We're having apprentices that are hiring on and walking out the door and going to Menard County. Because so obviously, uh, this is going to be an ongoing conversation, one that uh, aldermen are going to continue to have. Uh, but fast forwarding here, uh, you had an ordinance that uh, Alderman Sean Gregory wanted to focus on when it comes to the Y block and having a resolution uh, talking about more funding to have better pedestrian crosswalks, uh, especially for uh, all the Levitt concert amphitheater stuff that's happening out there. Uh, but uh, something else that he's looking to advance as well uh, he brought up last night at the council meeting what this particular order is is is, um, is to create a minority business enterprise similar to what the state does where where minority businesses can go in um, put in their information that they will be a certified minority business with the city of Springfield and then at that time um, our purchasing agent along with our uh, community relations director they will be able to send out emails and um, communications of bids to those minority owned businesses in hopes that we can raise raise the level of participation um, on, on city projects. So Alderman Gregory wanting to advance that but then it was time for new and unfinished business. Alderman Williams and Alderwoman Purchase talk about uh, what they were doing in their communities and their wards. I, I would like the uh, citizens to tour my ward. I want to show my my 25 worst locations, houses and buildings. Um, and if they would please contact me, we could set these tours up and, and then get them started, please. So that was my new business. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want me to purchase. Well, this is both of our wards, Enos Park, and we're doing our historic home tour this Saturday, September 16th from 1 to 5, as well as we have the annual Art uh, Edwards Place Art Fair, which is really big and nice, and I would invite all of my colleagues to come and join me and come and look at some of our historical houses that we have transformed over there. So uh, you can go and uh, check out some of the worst properties in Ward 3 or go and do a historic tour of Ward 3 and 4 in certain properties. So fascinating to hear that uh, uh, kind of dynamic there last night at the Springfield City Council meeting. It is the Council Roundup. That's all I got for you today with Springfield's morning news uh, when it comes to the Council Roundup.